Hello my soccer universe, let's review match day 2 of the Nations League, or so it is largely except for League B, but you know we already knew that there is a little bit chaos there due to World Cup qualifiers and a little war, no I should not say a little war, a big injustice in Ukraine that kind of messed up that calendar too, although the implications on the global scale of that are rather minor. But you know, that's a whole different story. Uh, this time around, I have not only League A nations in the background, I also have uh, or League B and a few League C nations. I needed to uh, <laughs> change it up a little bit and give a little bit more credit to uh, the smaller nations, although I don't think all of them are that small. If I look at Turkey, Greece and so on behind me. What I did is basically I went through uh, the results and said, yeah, who did win? And you went up there and then I had one slot left and that went to the Czech Republic, which will be the first game that we're talking about. I'm wearing Norway because I think they had the most impressive win overall. But as I said, we'll jump right in. Uh, Czech Republic against Spain was actually a game that, uh, you know, I was not really excited by the two choices that I had for League A and I completely missed out and I kicked myself of watching uh, Sweden-Norway because... That was the one that I actually said this should be the most in interesting one, but tells you I'm work-wise, I'm in a completely different frame of mind so that I just, then yeah, okay, League A, it's just this knee-jerk reaction, go League A. However, I have to say, I think it was a rather uh, entertaining game that I got uh, to watch there um, with, you know, uh, definitely changes had to be made uh, because the, the program is so dense and the Nations League in the end is actually a replacement for friendlies. So in that sense, uh, I totally am okay with uh, coaches saying, okay, it doesn't really matter all that much whether we're League A or League B, let's just test something. This is our opportunity to test. And if we perform well, yes, there's a backdoor that we get for uh, the Euros in this uh, particular Nations League. So the Czechs did not have their A squad out there, neither did Spain. However, the Czechs uh, were really smart in kind of keeping the Spaniards uh, away, keeping the spaces tight, took an early goal through Pezek and more or less Spain, typically Spain, tons of possession, but nothing really uh, to break down the Czech defense except until uh, Gavi in stoppage time found the, um, found the, the little hole to thread the uh, ball through and he makes it 1-1 uh, just before the half and at that point uh, he and still uh, he becomes the youngest uh, ever player to score for uh, Spain so uh, pretty exciting uh, that second half more of the same uh, and although I think that Spain uh, were a little bit more dominant a little bit more dangerous there However, the goal came for the Czechs and what a br uh, brilliant uh, goal it was. I mean, Gianni plays one deep to, into Kuchter who runs free on goal and then lobs over the goalkeeper. But that's one, you can frame that one, you can watch it over and over, over again. I love goals like that, where just the striker outsmarts a little bit the goal, goal goalkeeper with a little, little bit of skill. And the Czechs always had skill. However, um, the Spaniards were not to be outdone. I really thought at this point that the Czechs will hang on to that uh, win. However, uh, Javi Martinez does get the, in the end, deserved equalizer for Spain uh, with a uh, brilliant header in many ways that just goes on the underside of the cross button, just behind the line. Uh, it was not clear immediately whether it will be a draw. Uh, uh, it, it will be a goal or not. The game ends in a 2-2 draw between the Czechs and Spain. Um, I think overall a fair result, but you know, it was not the, uh, the super game. Super game, though, maybe from Portugal coming, uh, you know, again, I don't want to say bounce back from a draw with Spain because um, a draw with Spain is a draw with Spain. Um, but breaking down Switzerland very, uh, really early on. I mean, Switzerland took, had an early, early goal uh, through Seferovic that was chalked off for offside. And then as soon as Cavallo, uh, after Ronaldo assist, makes it 1 0, that was only one winner. And then uh, Ronaldo scores two just before the half, both assisted by Diogo Jota. He could have gone for the hat trick. Uh, didn't manage to get that and then after the half um, he had a goal that is allowed of course uh, so it was even there and then Joao Cancas in the 68 makes it a route for, Swiss, for Switzerland and basically Portugal at the moment seems to be in this group and, and we look at the, uh, the best position team let's put it that way 
I really was looking forward for uh, to Tuesday evening to to to, to watch Austria play Denmark because I really liked what Austria showed against Cro uh, Croatia. There is a little bit excitement building around this Austrian national team now that Rangnick is there, and he said we are gonna go full on. How it turned out to be a little bit of a farce, but not on the Austrian team side. Um, getting ready and suddenly lights out in Vienna. And the funny thing is, uh, it was not the entire stadium where the lights went out. Uh, most notably, the advertising boards on the side still had uh, some uh, some electricity, as did other uh, parts of the stadium. Uh, it was a huge power outage in the second district of Vienna, where the stadium, of course, is located. Um, the nearby Prater, there were some rides where people got stuck uh, hanging upside down as well. Um, one or two, most uh, got, got, got safe. So it was a major thing happening there. In addition, the day before uh, were, was a deluge of... Uh, it, it was really raining heavily, which, you know, Vienna is not really built for. And I think this is probably a part of why the power outage ended up happening. And for another reason, late, late, later on, as well uh so yeah people in vienna uh kept everyone uh entertained in a way the game in the end kicked off at 10 15. uh very late uh meaning i did not watch the game game anymore i watched uh, then uh croatia france which we get to in a sec so i only saw highlights um from what i could see is that danes it was a complete different story to a year ago when Denmark went to Aust 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 Austria and then just in the second half kicked it into the neck and next game completely blew Austria off the park. This time it was a much more even uh, and level affair um, with the better end for the Danes who were more clinically Austria creating quite a few chances uh, but cannot uh, fin finish them. And then, uh, you know, a bad deflection uh, from, a, uh, from a cross lens in front of Heuberg who makes it 1-0. Um, Austria having actually a few chances to actually at least get an equalizer uh, there. In the second half, it, uh, not which Savis and Gregorich come out. I mean, that's the other thing. Austria started with nine new players, which um, it, uh, the drop off was not that big because they did. It was all, always the, the discussion. We, uh, we, we don't have such a big squad. Rangnick comes in and you don't see a drop off in quality, in, in quality, which is something I always had the feeling. Uh, of they get the equalizer in a typical pressing moment where I think Ray Gregor presses on to um, uh, Schmeichel who gets the ball to Arnautovic who has the press press and to play back to Schlager who, who, who can put it back in Arnautovic then hits the crossbar in his 100th game for Austria so uh, a big milestone there's only the third player ever to uh, make, make it for Austria to 100 and I think he is probably primed to make it uh, to become the top capped uh, national team player in Austria because the top is 103 for Andreas Herzog. So uh, I think he will get there pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sure. Um, so equalizer Anatovic for his 100 doesn't get the equalizer. And then with the one chance that the Danes have an admittedly really pretty goal by Sriga Larsen, but he was given ample of space. Uh, Sriga Larsen, of course, has played for all sorts of Makes it 2-1 for the Danes. Um, Ralf Rannig afterwards say, I, I feel I, it, it, was the, I, I was in the wrong movie because we should have gotten a draw. And it was the overall consensus from the Austrian camp was, yeah, this was rather, rather unlucky, but it was kind of a messed up night. And messed up was also the pitch in the Ernst Happel Stadium where uh, at the center circle suddenly there was a huge hole and seemingly it was a groundwater swell during the rain that they fell down and uh, took the pitch and um, the stadium is very near to the Danube so uh, there's an immediate interference. So yeah, um, the Austrian Football Federation, let's say it was not a glorious um, sign to have uh, such a faulty pitch, to have the power outage. Yes, these are things that you cannot really do and that the Ensemble Stadion is unfortunately old and in desperate need of uh, repair or, you know, get something modern in is, uh, yeah, ev ev everyone in Austria knows about it, but no one wants to... Um, wants to pay up for it let's put it that way because the Austrian Football Federation is not flush with money uh, but you know more on that in a sec when we talk a little bit later um, because I will have a chance to look at the state of the stadium uh, very 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 soon. Croatia France um, I think Le Bleu were 
overall the better team and had the chance. I think the Nkunku goal was rightly not not given for offside. Um, Rabio gives them a lead early in the second half and at that point it really seemed the France had this game very much under control. They just cannot make the second goal. And then some changes come in and um, uh, close who had just come, uh, come, uh, come on, gives away a penalty, which was a weird situation because it, there were two potential offside situations for Croatia in the leader. But yeah, Kramaric gets the equalizer. Uh, as I said, Croatia probably needed that result after losing 3 0 at home to Austria. Um, it was the 150th cap, so we have to mention that for Luka Modric, which is, of course, an amazing number. I think he's only the second ever European to reach that mark. The first one was Lothar Mateus. And if he plays number one, he becomes the record holder there. So, a uh, pretty big sign there as well. Although I'm not 100%, but I think he is the leader at the moment. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, France, overall, despite making many, many changes, looked actually not that bad. Uh, actually quite good, but we uh, have to be li feel a little bit of grief to get only the one one draw. Um, what can I say about Germany Inc? I mean, this was a game. Yes, I had to do some programming here, but this was was a game that I was actually really look, looking forward to. I mean, the first and most notable stuff was that the German jerseys didn't look uh, quite right in a way, in many ways. Uh, I thought others oh, already the World Cup jerseys, and I said nah, nah. Then I see only two stars on top, and then I had to immediately go on footy hair head, 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 headlines, and then yeah, it clicked. Those are the women's team's jerseys. Uh, the official explanation is that the German Federation wants to put the spotlight onto the women's plight to win another Euros, because you know Germany has been winning the Euros over and over again. Now for the first time, not, and they want to recapture uh, that uh, trophy. I think there is a much more cynical view is that those jerseys, because what Adidas put out for the Women's World Cup, um, uh, no, yeah, Women's Euros, uh, is rather average. Although the Germany jersey doesn't look all the all, all bad. So they wanted to sell a few more jerseys and yeah, let's have the national team wear them against England. And if we win, maybe we'll sell some. It looked really weird for Germany to have only two stars above the crest. Women's jersey, all right, super, but at least get the stars right. I know, I know, I know. I think the women have 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 been wearing in the nineties the three star jersey. Uh, did they have that even back then? That would be now something some, 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 some to look uh, out for. That was a little bit weird. The other thing that I find a little bit more uh, uh, weird and not quite 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 right is that. Adidas made special player version uh, jerseys for the men's team, which the women don't get. Something's not right there. Something's not right there. The game itself, uh, I think Germany will feel a little bit unlucky to not have won that one. I mean, Hofmann had a goal uh, scrapped in the first half. It was not a great game and it looked weird to me. England in blue against Germany uh, in white just doesn't look right. I mean, England there should play in red. Um, it was, of course, Calvin Phillips had to come off, which caused a huge uh, delay in the game as well. So yeah, there, there was some break. It was not very fluid, but if it was, it was actually that Germany looked more ready and more like a team than England was. Uh, although when England got dangerously in front of goal, I thought they were had a little bit more, uh, you know, more of a hint of danger than uh, Germany actually did. Um, Hofmann gets the first goal. I don't, it was a well taken shot. Uh, many say Pickford should have taken that one. I'm not so sure. I think this, this was a very well placed goal. Um, I think the big change is then when uh, finally Grealish comes on the 72nd. Seven then England had a little bit more oomph up front and in, in the end they get a penalty after Schlotterbeck foul. It needed to be looked on VAR. I thought initially it was a little bit of a uh, soft penalty to be honest. But then you see how it's swiping over and yes, uh, there was no offside. Kane puts it home 1-1. One, one. England still not with the win. Germany still not with the win in the Nations League. One team that had already a win was Hungary and Italy were going for the first win. And um, the Italians, young team, many changes uh, as well, but actually it looked quite good and entertaining what's going on forward. And uh, Barella scoring a wonderful goal, Pellegrini getting another one, 2-2-0. Two, two uh, the only thing that you have to say is I think the scoreline was probably not... I mean, Hungary did not... Um, it was not played off the park. 
But I think England was a step above hung, hung, uh, Hungary. That the Mancini own goal actually led um, Hungary a little bit back in the game in the second half. I think a 3-1 scoreline would have been more indicative of uh, how the balance of the game was. But, you know, uh, in this admittedly tough group, at, the, at, at least after the first two games, Italy looked rather, rather good. Now they have to go to Wembley. Uh, I think Wembley. Or is he playing in Rome? Ah, we'll, we'll, we'll see that later. Uh, to replay the Euro final, and that will be a uh, true test then, in a way, for them. Uh, but, you know, the way England have been showing, Italy looked better, and they didn't look good against our, 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 our Argentina, I have to add. Uh, Belgium was the same trick as Germany. Yeah, the women's jersey for Belgium are not selling well. Uh, let's have Belgium wear them. Uh, Lew Lewandowski is a pretty brilliant goal, gives Poland the lead. Um, however, it was Belgium who looked abject against the Netherlands, actually showed up this this time. They get a deserved equal just before that with a wonderful Witzel shot and then roll over Poland. Absolutely roll over. It was then the De Bruyne show who just played Poland uh, off the park. He gets um, the go ahead, had the golden Trossard, scores two uh, assists by Batuay and Carrasco. Uh, and then uh, two, uh, I think the second one by Trossard was a really, really nicely taken shot. And then Donka with a uh, far out and then stoppage over Penda, 6 1. Auto destruction. I was actually watching at the same time, and again, uh, <laughs> I have been doing work in the evening, the game is on, so I was more listening than watching. However, Wales and the Nenas for the most of the time, was, especially the first half, was rather, rather uh, boring in many ways. There was not much happening. Nenas, of course, also with the B team. Uh, but you know, giving the young people a chance, and I think this is uh, Louis van Gaal's uh, strength. Cope Miners then gives the Netherlands a 1-0 lead and I never thought that they will relinquish that lead because it really looked uh, like Wales, they have given it their all against Ukraine. They get back, uh, they, it looked really going uh, rather flat and it will be an easy 1-0 win for the Netherlands. Well, in stoppage time, Norrington Davis uh, scores an equal as 90 seconds and said, nah, they did really need that because that was not really deserved either. However, uh, Malasia then plays a ball to Vejos, who takes a shot uh, just two to two, two, two minutes later. Two on the Netherlands uh, who take control of that group as well. I want to go now, after having him talk so much about Ligue 1, let, let's go through the other uh, results. We had, um, uh, of course, first one, Serbia against uh, Slovenia, big 4-1 win for Serbia. Although the second, the last two goals went late and it was 1-1 at the halftime, but Serbia desperately needed to get uh, that win. Um, Sweden, Norway, that was the big one where um, Holland scores a brace against Sweden in Sweden. And, you know, this could be a power shift in Scandinavia because Sweden is usually the, uh, the, the, the top team there. But I think the tide could again be turning towards Norway like it was in the 90s in many ways. So uh, really, really in, in, in interesting. This now the Zlatan era is over. Uh, uh, we can even say the Larsen Zlatan uh, era is over. And now Norway is coming back in, especially with Holland, uh, Oedegaard and, you know, other really good um, um, players that have to find a little bit their footing. However, I was really, uh, I mean, the penalty that Holland got, and then, uh, of course, he got um, a little bit insulted by a Swiss, a, a, a Swiss player that runs past him, makes it 2 0, and Sweden can only pull one back late uh, through Elanga. So, yeah, uh, pretty impressive stuff. I think to me, this was the biggest uh, win of all of the ones that, that, that we'll be talk, talking about. Uh, other results we have Iceland, Albania 1 uh, 1, Finland be 2 0 against Montenegro, and Bosnia against Romania 1 0. Romania looking also not that good. Then we had some makeup games already. In League B, where Ireland uh, loses home to Ukraine. Um, yes, overall, Ukraine were probably the more uh, better. I don't want to say the better team, but they look more like a team, but Ireland had their chances in there. The goal came through a Ziganko free kick that just got longer and longer and longer until it landed net. Ireland hit the post once, had probably a good shot for a panel penalty. On the other side, Ukraine had a goal disallowed for offside. So, yeah. Um, Ukraine actually, the more I think about it, the more it is sad to not see it in the World Cup because I think they are actually a pretty good team overall. Um, Scotland beating also Armenia 2 0. 
Then we go to League C, where um, you know Cyprus not uh, nil nil Gibraltar uh, losing at home to North Macedonia two nil. Not too uh, that so surprising. However, uh, probably the biggest result is Georgia going to Razgrad, so they have not played in Sofia and beating Bulgaria five two. Uh, absolute devastation for Bulgaria's uh, national team coach stepped down immediately. How smart is this in such a tight window to do that? Uh, I'm asking myself about it. I think he should have stepped down later, but you know, uh, emotions are running high. Could have been three already at the half. It was two with an own goal and Bulgaria only can put one uh, back and then uh, it was 5-1 with the last two goals and for Bulgaria, uh, very, very, very late on. Uh, dark times. Dark times for Bulgaria. Greece on, on the other side seem to be getting back finally in the groove and finally taking the Nations League seriously because this is something I think they once uh, lost out on a, a, a chance to go, to go all to the Euros because they threw away a last game in the first uh, part of the Nations League. This time seemingly taking a series, you want to go Group B. Greece is a team that definitely should be in League B if you ask me. They get the win at Kosovo, which was the top clash, and I think uh, Greece is, pro is probably coming out of that group. Uh, another shocker was Kazakhstan winning against Slovakia. I think the Slovak coach also stepped down. I'm not 100% uh, uh, on that. Luxembourg, who is become of the smallest nations now, the biggest one, 1-0 one at the Faroe Islands, and Turkey 6-0 over Lithuania. Also a uh, rather impressive win. And then we have, finally, in League D, uh, the Minos clash between San Marino and Malta. So th this was the best chance of San, of San Marino in a long time to winning a game. They lose at home 2-0. Latvia won the level Legion, Andorra, Moldova 0-0. Not many goals scored there. So let's run through the tables. Back to front. Uh, League D. Uh, Latvia looking now in control in their group uh, to uh, go up. As do Malta over Estonia, but you know Malta, Estonia, I shouldn't say, this is level, this is not, uh, and probably Estonia will go through. So the two Baltic teams, which don't feel like League D material, um, probably will go up again. In uh, League C, Turkey, uh, firm link in control, although don't underestimate Luxembourg, I think there's something growing. It's between the Ferris and uh, Lithuania, who will go down, um, let's see. Another Baltic state uh, uh, country in League D. I think it's more the Faroe Islands, if you have, but you see the ratings, they're rather level. Greece, firmly in control in their group. They just need to set this, get this home. Uh, Greece, as I said, should go up into uh, the top league. Um, Kazakhstan find themselves on top of their group, uh, which is rather in, in, in interesting because they are, they are kind of... Uh, I don't want to say promoted team, but you know, they were about to go down, but had to play the playoffs. Slovakia finding themselves in early trouble, but maybe they can turn, turn, turn around. And then I think it's between Georgia and North Macedonia. Bulgaria is out, but there's also not much chance that they get relegated because you should uh, beat Gibraltar. Um, if we go to League B, uh, the first group doesn't say much because Scotland and Ukraine have only played one game, but you know, they won their opening games. So uh, Ukraine is the favorite there. Uh, the group uh, where Russia is already down, it's a three-way race. Take your pick. It has been only draw so so far. I'm still leaning more uh, most Albania, but uh, it could be really anyone's um, uh, uh, first place to take. Uh, it will be a fight between Finland and Bosnia of who will go up uh, there. Montenegro and Romania seem to be a little bit step below. I'm worried actually about Romania. Romania is having also a rather tough time. And then Norway with two big away wins are uh, now also firmly in control of their destiny. Serbia and Sweden stay probably in League B League, League and we will get Norway in League A, which I think is uh, would be exciting to see. One of the best young strikers uh, play against the best teams. But, you know, still plenty of games to play. And now, uh, Denmark, Austria. Uh, then Denmark have Austria and France. France in two games have, have, have not won yet. Uh, so that's interesting. Denmark, super in control. Also, like Norway, two big away wins against France and against Austria. So, uh, Portugal and Czechs on top. It seems to be a three-way race, but, you know, with uh, kind of decisive already against Portugal, especially since Portugal have gotten a point in Spain. But Spain, of course, still have the chance to win this group. Italy take control of their group. It's still a very even group. Still, Hungary is seen as the rank outsider, as they probably should be. But, you know, that win 
might carry. Now let, let's see what war they can do against Germany. And as I said, the Netherlands also uh, two away wins rather in control. Let's look at uh, the favorites to win the Nations League. So this is also for League A. As I said, Netherlands will probably host the tournament if they should win the group. So the, the group winner of the last uh, of A4 will host the uh, final four. Therefore, the Netherlands are the favorites. Denmark, Portugal, and Italy would round out at the moment uh, the final four, which I think is a very interesting would would be a very very interesting one. I uh, still loads to loads to be played, but those four teams uh, seem to be most in control. And it's a little bit of a crapshoot because you don't know with all the chain changes, literally anything could happen. As for upcoming games. I'm looking most forward to Austria France because I'll be going with the family there. I am so excited to see that, uh, you know, I got the tickets ahead of the Croatia game uh, because I felt, yeah, this might be one that will get so sold, especially if Austria get a good result. They did it. I had my tickets before. So very happy. And the girls for the, uh, and my wife will be the, for the first time in the big stadium in Vienna. Yes, it's a crappy stadium in a way. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it, uh, and I, I'm sure we will have fun. The standout game is, of course, England against Italy, a uh, replay of the Euro final, although there will not be much hanging on it. Hungary, Germany, I think, is also interesting. Uh, and then, yeah, Netherlands, Poland, Wales, Bel Belgium, yeah, and up there, I think Switzerland, no, Portugal, Czech Republic. That's the one you should watch <laughs> tonight. Tonight, yeah, when this posts. Uh, in League B, uh, or you want to watch Sweden, Serbia. That could also be. Maybe I should watch Sweden, Serbia. Uh, that looks interesting. Uh, an atmospheric game should be Ireland, Scotland. Uh, maybe not a great, uh, great game, but it could be a very atmospheric game. I have, have to say, League B, uh, except for the Sweden, Norway, Serbia group. I mean, the Ukraine, Ireland, Scotland group, there are names in, in, in there, but I think the only group that really excites me is the one with Sweden, Serbia, and Norway, to be honest. Uh, League C, uh, yeah, Greece, Cyprus, Greek speaking duel, uh, North Macedonia against Georgia, also for a top spot there, uh, and Luxembourg, Turkey, also top duel there. So, uh, interesting stuff. And then uh, we have, of course, League D, uh, the last few uh, matches there. Andorra Liechtenstein is the one that I would suggest. So yeah, it was kind of a longish video, but I hope um, you enjoyed this review. Please, I will, of course, give you a little bit from the match in Vienna, uh, maybe separate from a review, because, uh, but you know, since we have the week, week in Vienna, I don't know how it will work out for me. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!